Michael Gove clearly has an agenda at the moment about education in schools, um, which is not fully formed and which I suppose will develop um, and consolidate during his time, which I hope will be quite long, uh, in post as Secretary of State for Education. And he is getting in January next year to the subjects which are not part of the core curriculum, which history is one. So part of the purpose of this book of ours, and part of the reason it's timed the way it is, is that this will provide him uh, with uh, a huge amount of information and material and arguments and recommendations of which I hope he will take very serious notice. We've done the work for him in a sense. There are certain people who have a very alarmist view that things are terrible, it's all going wrong, uh, there's no hope or future for history in schools. Um, but actually, people have been saying that for the last hundred years, um, and they can't all be right. Moreover, an awful lot of the discussion now, which thinks things are very bad, assumes an earlier golden age. History as a taught subject in classrooms in English state schools. And among the many things that that shows is that history has never been taught on the whole for more than two or at the most three hours a week, that it's rarely been compulsory. In fact, it's never been compulsory beyond the age of 14. Uh, and that many of the arguments that are made now, as if they're novel, that history isn't very well taught, that it should be a cheerleading narrative of national greatness, that it should be something more nuanced, that it should be just about this country, that it should be about Britain's relations with the broader world. Many of these arguments that are produced now as if they're novel insights have been around since before the First World War. Actually, in almost every other serious Western European country, history is compulsory to the age of 16, and it's not clear why we should be uniquely uh, in favour of not educating young people in history to that age, and no justification for that has ever been advanced. Uh, it's also the case as a matter of historical record that when the national curriculum was devised by Ken Baker, the original intention was that history should be compulsory to 16. Ken Baker wanted that, Keith Joseph wanted that, uh, and David Blunkett, another former Secretary of State for Education, is rather of the same view. And that original scheme, which meant that there would be a coherent national curriculum for children from the ages of 5 to 16, was then truncated, decapitated, by uh, Kenneth Clark when he became Secretary of State for Education. And no adequate justification of that has ever been given. If you look at the list of presidents of the Board of Education and then ministers of education and then secretaries of state for education running from 1900 through to now, the average tenure of office is about two years. Um, well, you wouldn't um, expect the average tenure of the editor of The Guardian to be two years. You couldn't run a newspaper on that basis. You wouldn't expect the head of a company to change every two years. Um, that does suggest that whatever governments claim, they're not wholly serious about education. Uh, you really can't accomplish very much in two years. You barely get to know your civil servants or understand what the problems are.